this lesson, we will look at the inventory menu, which we have on the left hand side here. The inventory menu is where we start by defining our room where we will create our kitchen. And when we have done so, we will start adding cabinets and appliances and what else we can think of putting into our kitchen. So let's get started. The first thing we will do is to create our room. I will not go through every single process that you can find in here, but I will show you how to get started and what you can expect to find under all those submenus. In order to do so, I think we will start by having a completely new layout. Here we go. And when you say you want to start a new layout, it starts in the floor view, as you can see here. And when you pick an item from your inventory menu, you will get a sub menu opening up down here. And this is where we begin to define our kitchen. You can pick this one and you can create the room by putting in the measurements that you have taken in your kitchen. But if your kitchen have a certain uh, layout, you can pick something down here that comes close to your layout and then change the measurements so it reflects what you have in your house. If you, for instance, has a really big room that is opening into your family room or your dining area, you can uh, pick the open room solution because then you only define one end of the room and the other one is like open-ended. You can also say that you have a kitchen that is defined by four walls or maybe has an indent like this one. So you pick the one that you think is closest to what you have in your house. We will just pick anyone, any random now. Let's try this one. On your right hand side, this is where you can put in the measurements for your room. And it's really straightforward because you can see that there is a small letter like here saying A. And this is where you put in the measurement for A. Apart from that, you can also drag and change the size of the room. All those measurements you can change. And when you let go of it, it will update the number over here how much it is. For instance, if I make C longer, you will see C is updating. If I make D longer, D is updating. So that's the first thing you want to do. When you have defined the outer geometry of your room, you can start adding doors, windows, you can pick the flooring, you can look at the walls and the ceilings, you can add fixtures like plumbing, see, plumbing, electricity, heating, ventilation. And by adding all those items, you will be able to define your room. Because this is very important when you want to start adding cabinets that you have all your fixtures in there. So you know whether you have to shift the, the plumbing if you put the sink in a different spot or you have to take into um, considerations that you have some air inlets or whatever you can have in your room. We will get to that in a second. So when we have defined the geometry of our room, we can go over here and we can change what we know. For instance, I know that we don't have many houses with 100 inches to the ceiling. Most houses are 94 to 96. And then we can apply and then we can lock the measurements. That means that now we have locked in and we won't be able to change those again until we unlock. This is very convenient. So we don't by accident, you know, uh, drag on a wall and we'll change the whole setup because if that happens, the cabinets starts shifting around. However, before we go ahead and we lock our room, we need to add doors and windows and other 
features of the room because they will be locked as well, not only the measurements. So when you click at doors, for instance, you will see down here the submenu for the doors available for you to pick. You can pick an exterior door if you have one of those. And when you have it, you can drag it to any way you like. And now this sub menu on your right hand side is showing your physical dimensions of the door. This is an 80 inch door that is 40 inch wide. And you can change the handle, the handle position, which way the door opens and uh, so forth. And that is convenient because you like, as I said before, you like this layout to be a copy of your real room because it is important whether this door opens this way or will open the other way, this way. This is opening out now and here we can change it to be hinged the other way. So you might as well go in and pick the same as you have in your room. And apart from the exterior door I just put in, you can pick any kind of door down here to reflect. I can put in a door opening, which is basically a door opening without a door. And you can change the width of it either by dragging on it or by changing the width up here in the sub menu for that specific item. You can also change your frame coloring if you want to add color to it. I rarely do that. And in the same way as doors, you can add windows, whether it's a clear window with no features or it, it's a vertical window. Many houses has the double hung window. Where did it go? It's right there. And you can also make that wider either by pulling on it or by changing the values over here. As you will see here, compared to the doors where you only have two measurements and this one, you also have the height from the floor which is important. After doors and windows, you can go in and you can pick your flooring. This is basically only for the visual part of the layout because whether you pick tile and here the sub menu will open or you pick wood, it is only for the visual. It has nothing to do with how you can place your cabinets. Now we pick this one, which you cannot see here before you go to the 3D view. In the 3D view, you will be able to see <clears throat> your doors and windows and, and even the door opening over here. And you can see, you can pick the floor, pick another type. You can go over here and change this as well. If you say no, I don't want the wood, I want tile, the blue one. Which you may not like, so you pick another one. And all this, as I said before, is just for visual. It is has no interference with how your kitchen layout plan will function. It's only for you to see how it will look. Which makes it uh, absolutely valuable so you just go ahead and pick something that is coming close to what you like. See, there's even IKEA flooring in here. You can also pick carpets, laminate. So I think we'll stick with this one. Walls and ceiling is where you can define your walls. All this is also just for visual. We can put some color on the wall. What would look nice with, I like blue. So let's make a blue wall. 
think we have to pick the wall first. Oh, wall color, blue. Apply, here we go. Now we got blue walls. Dark blue walls. We can change the moldings. Most kitchens do not have moldings anymore. So we will take them away. And as you noticed, the baseboards disappeared as well, which is fine because from a functional point of view, when we are designing the kitchen layout, we don't need them. Here we can change the color of the moldings and the baseboard. Wall tiles. This is if we have wall tiles. You see when I click this one, we get a section of wall tiles and we can move it up and down. But more important, we can make it wider and we can make it higher. It is very rare I use this function. So I will go ahead and remove this one again by clicking delete. Back to the fixtures like we talked about before that this is uh, very useful because when you have measured your kitchen and you find out that you have your plumbing sitting, for instance, in, in this kitchen, we can say that this is the door out to the patio and we got a big window here where we will like to have our sink in front of, then we can go in and we can just find something that looked like the one we have when we look under the sink. And then here we go, we can move it over here and place it in the distance that we have measured in our room. The same goes with electricity. We can put in wall switches and we can put in outlets. I will just let you know that this is where you find all these. I will not go ahead and place every single item. This one is very important. This is additional structures. And we use that, for instance, if we have bulkheads. Many houses in the US and in Canada have bulkheads in the room. And um, we like to put them in our layout plan as well, because they can be the deciding factor whether we have 40 inch wall cabinets, or 30 inch wall cabinets, or our pantry cabinets are 80 or 90. Before, because I have dark blue walls in my room now, as you remember, I picked before. My bulkhead up here, which they call a ceiling box, is also dark blue. I find that changing the size of the bulkhead is easier in this view than in the 3D view. So when I go over here, I can drag it to have the length I want and also the width. See, and if I go in 3D view, I can change the height of it. This is a very, very big bulkhead. Normally they look something like this. I think we should maybe make it white again. Just so we can see it better. See, there it is, our bulkhead. Now this bulkhead per automatic will sit up there because it's a ceiling box, but, but you could in theory move it down, which you won't need very often. But it is possible by dragging on this little arrow. You see when it changed to light green is where it will go automatic if you let go of the mouse, right? If I move it here and let go when it's green, it will jump back up. If I pull it down, and I don't let go of my mouse, and I wait for that green shadow to disappear, it will stay right there. And again, if I do like this, and it moves up. So that's very convenient. Under additional structures, we have, if you got, for instance, sloped ceiling, you can put that in. You can have a post. If you have a we got a post there and a column there. The difference between the two is one is round 
one is not round. What they do automatically is that they will have the same height as your room. So they will always go from the floor to the ceiling. And you can move them around where you have a post. We don't want a post right now, so we'll take it away. Decorations, floor plans, table plans, hanging plans. I never use those. But if you like to see <clears throat> with how your kitchen will look with a plant hanging somewhere, you can go in and pick it. See? There we go. I think we will delete that one. So now we have defined our room and we can start adding some cabinets to it.